Listen, I know the name of this channel is Forever Analog, but I still have a ton of CDs. And I still buy CDs. And all my vintage CD players have broken. So I bought a new CD player. Let's talk about the Cambridge AXC 35 right after this. So one of the things I like about the Cambridge AXC 35 CD player is that design-wise it really goes great obviously with the other AX line of gear that's out from Cambridge. So for instance, this AXA 25 amplifier, which I recently did a review on, this matches you know the design overall. And so it just looks really great either sitting on top or next to it. It's maybe a little hard to notice here, but you can kind of see that there's uh, this kind of space here that kind of comes down. And so it looks like it's sitting kind of flush right here, but it's actually not. In the back of the unit, um, if you see back here, you can see there's plenty of space for the amplifier to still breathe and not overheat. So it's not the end of the world when it's sitting on top. But overall, you can't go wrong with these rounded edges. And, you know, I think everything just looks nice and sleek and clean. There's nothing really fancy to note about the CD player. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It's just a CD player, right? Um, you got your power button and you've got eject, play, stop, uh, reverse and forward, which is kind of all you really need uh, on the front of the unit. One of the great features of the Cambridge AXC35 is really just the fast response in reading a disc. Now, I am the type of person that has been buying vintage CD players for years and just using those until they stop working. Um, but as we all know, buying older or owning older CD players, they all come with like, you know, their own issues in terms of uh, the tray not wanting to open, um, you know, just it taking forever to read, those sorts of things. The Cambridge, though, is really responsive. It powers on really quick. And the first time I opened the drawer after having, you know, used vintage CD players so long, I was like, Look at that. <laughs> nice and easy, right? The other thing too is it loads discs very quickly. And I'll explain why this is sort of important to me because I've been using a Blu-ray player to play uh, CDs. Um, it's a Sony uh, Blu-ray player that I bought years ago. And, you know, look, as great as it is, the, the Blu-ray player, it takes forever to load discs. I'll actually make a video here and show you here in a minute um, to kind of compare it. But usually by the time I played one or two CDs on the Blu-ray player, I'm just over it and just either ready to put some records on or something along these lines. Uh, but this is just nice and easy to, uh, to operate. Everything loads fast and starts playing right away, uh, which really made me uh, listen to more CDs with the Cambridge AXC35. Okay, so on the uh, far right of my system over here, I just kind of have a stack of components, a couple cassette decks that I'm sort of working on and testing. And uh, this is the Sony Blu-ray player I was talking about. So just to give you a quick idea, you know, this is what I was using. And I mean, overall it sounded fine. I ended up using a external DAC with it, so. But here we go, I'm just waiting, just waiting. Still waiting. Oh. Okay. Oh, look, there's already a disc in there, so I'll close it. Finally. So, like I said, the Cambridge popped the disc in, it loads right up. And I know it sounds silly, it's probably like, who really cares, you know, you got this Blu-ray player, but these units are the ones that I used to always pick up when I'd find them in thrift stores or whatever that were cheap. Um, but it just, it's so much easier to use the Cambridge and I find myself using, uh, or like I said, listening to so many more CDs using the Cambridge rather than waiting on this little puppy to load. Okay, forget the uh, tight video angle here. I'm still uh, actually using this AXA. 
25 amplifier so I still have everything hooked up and I wanted to uh, show you the rear of the CD player so I figured I would just kind of move it to the side here and get a shot for you. The most important thing really to note on the rear of the AXC uh, 35 CD player here is that it comes with a set of RCA outputs and it comes with the digital output and I will talk a little bit later about sort of uh, the importance of having that the digital output and as you can see it there I've got my uh, ship Modi DAC that I'm currently using with this CD player so when we talk a little bit about the sound we'll kind of compare what it sounds like uh, using the internal DAC versus using an external DAC but um, for the most part um, you, you know, I always encourage people to look for CD players with this digital out so that you can always upgrade your DAC should you want to years down the road. And uh, the Cambridge AXC35 uh, provides you with that opportunity. The Cambridge AXC35 does actually come with a remote control, which is interesting because uh, I'm using this, right, paired with the AXA25 amplifier on the bottom, which is the more budget amp and that does not come with a remote. So if you buy a stack like this, you're gonna have a remote control that works with the CD player, but not the amplifier. Now, one thing to note on this remote is there are actually, um, uh, there's volume control and things of that nature for some, oh, right here, can't, can't find it. So <laughs> this volume does not work um, on the AXA25. What I think Cambridge did is they have a model up, um, amplifier up called the AXA35. Um, not to get confused with the AXC35, which is a CD player. And my guess is that this remote control probably would change the volume control on that AXA amplifier, which again, I don't have, I just have the AXA35. 25 so volume control doesn't work on here but um, as you can see you know I've got a good good remote control use at least for the CD player uh, lots of people love to really get critical over remote controls this is just a regular old uh, plastic unit that uh, is nothing fancy but does what it needs to there's just a few final things worth noting before you consider buying uh, the Cambridge AXC 35 the first is that Cambridge also offers a CD player that's uh, less expensive than the AXC35, and it's the AXC25, right? And that model, because it's less expensive, does not come with the digital output that I showed you on the rear. Now, for me, that's sort of a deal breaker. I really, really always encourage people to pay up and get that digital output so that you can always add DACs as you would like going forward. Um, so, but so that's something worth noting if you're shopping and you see oh there's one that's cheaper the 25 I would skip that model and just go ahead and upgrade to the AXC 35 I don't think the price difference is that different maybe it's maybe like a hundred dollars or something along those lines um, one thing another thing to note is that the AXC 35 does not play SACDs right the super audio CD format so if you've got a large collection of those, the Cambridge will not play it. It will play burned CDR and CDRW, uh, should you still have those uh, in your collection. Um, another thing to note is the digital display here on this unit, it's only gonna show you the track number and the timing. So there's no uh, track names or artist names or anything like that that scrolls across. Uh, what you see there is what you get. Um, one other thing, the, there is no USB input on the back. You know, some people, there was like a time period where CD players started, I think when MP3s were getting popular, they would have sort of a USB input on the front or the back and you could plug in a thumb drive and play files through it. Um, this does not offer that. It's just a good old fashioned CD player. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, so you, you if you've got, uh, if, if you, if you've got a thumb drive or something, you would want to probably hook it up to some sort of, uh, you know, either DAC or streamer that would offer that USB um, input. Um, both of these units have this feature, which is kind of good and kind of bad, but they will both automatically shut off. Um, they'll go into standby mode after 20 minutes of non-use. Um, I think that's kind of a, you know, it's a cool feature. The only thing that I, and I complained about this on the, my Cambridge amp review, 
these uh these lights here when they're powered on and off like so this is currently off and now it's on but like you really can't see the difference right oh look at that little little sound for me there uh you really can't tell the difference when it's off and on like that's how different the light is on there so but um if you're somebody that's uh you know running around like crazy all the time and uh, you're in and out of the house and you don't want to have to remember to turn off your hi-fi gear um, these will go into standby mode in 20 minutes okay so the most important question how does the cambridge cd player sound first it's worth noting that um, the internal dac on um, the cambridge is a wolfson microelectronics wm8524 dac um, and that supports 24-bit, uh, 192 kilohertz, two-channel stereo PCM playback. Yep, that's right. And yes, I read that because there is no way I would be able to recall that off the top of my head. Um, right out of the box, you're gonna—I think you're really gonna like the way the CD player sounds. Um, comparing it to my vintage players, I felt like it was a lot more detailed. Um, you could hear uh, a better instrumentation placement, um, better sound stage, all, all of those compared to uh, my vintage player. I always try to find a, you know, a CD that's kind of recorded in a way that's not, you know, overly compressed. You know, most of my 90 CD collection is going to be, you know, either alternative punk or grunge stuff that's probably not recorded in the best way possible and so um, this Willie Nelson Teatro CD is one that I always kind of pull out when looking to uh, listen to CD players um, and or DAX and you know it was produced by Daniel Lanois recorded in a movie theater so it's got a nice really nice big sound that I enjoy um, and and uh, the Cambridge right out of the box just sounded great with the CD player what really surprised me was when I you know hooked up the shit Modi DAC um, I think that's when things sort of really opened up on the CD player, um, you know, by using that external DAC. That's when the soundstage got really bigger. You could really hear, there's a song called Everywhere I Go that kind of starts out with acoustic guitar uh, strings being plucked. Those really jumped out um, with the Modi DAC. And, um, you know, Willie Nelson's sister, Bobby Nelson, who unfortunately just passed away, um, plays the Wurlitzer on... Uh, on this album and I, I felt like that her playing just really stood out more when I hooked up the DAC versus um, you know just using the internal DAC in the CD player but you know that's sort of the role of the DAC right the external DAC is just to make it you know to make these things sound a little bit better and so for me the Cambridge coming right out and not hooking up the DAC I was happy uh, and I would recommend it to anyone, um, you know, that's that's interested in just a great performing, great sounding CD player. And again, you can't go wrong with a digital output that's going to allow you to hook up any DAC you'd like in the future and simply make that sound better. Okay, so now that we've gone through all the features on the Cambridge AXC35, there's really only one question left, and is that is what I recommend someone buying the CD player. My answer is definitely yes for anyone that's used to picking up vintage CD players that uh, at thrift stores or garage sales or whatever, um, you know, it, you find for like 10 or 20 bucks. Uh, you know, vintage CD players always seem to have the same problems. All of mine did. You know, the laser burned out, the drawer wouldn't open and close, and the belt to replace it was just n nearly impossible to find the right size. And also just to the, the DAX that were 20, 30 years old just didn't really sound that great um, for the CD collection that I have. And so upgrading to the Cambridge AXC35 was, uh, was a great option for me and I think it would be for you as well. I paid $399 for this. Um, I guess by the time it was shipped to me it's more, more closer to about $420. And if you're someone that's interested in adding a CD player, especially if you have the Cambridge line units, um, the AXA25 or the AXA35, I just think that this stack looks great together. So I would definitely 100% recommend it for anyone that already owns the amplifier. Um, but even if you don't own the amplifier, this is still a great standalone CD player um, that I believe uh, will sound great in your system right out of the box. But if you're someone like me that even has an external DAC and wants to play around with getting even better sound of, out of it, it's got the digital output that will let you do that as well. Um, like I said, I've really enjoyed using this unit and would highly recommend it to anyone um, who's looking for a new CD player. Thank you for watching.